Carol Perez and today I'm going to show you how to paint lilacs in a watering can tin and you will use your basic watercolor supplies that you have on hand. I'm not going to go into detail on what supplies you should have and hopefully you've painted a little bit before. If you haven't then please contact me and I'll give you a list of supplies that are useful. Um, I just want to let you know I do use professional quality supplies, um, Fabriano paper, I use a variety of synthetic and natural brushes, and my paints are Winsor Newton, Holbein, Daniel Smith, M. Graham, and maybe a couple others, but they're the professional quality, not the student grade. Um, the colors that I used today were um, Rose Matter with a little bit of Quinn Magenta for the pinks, um, Ultramarine Violet and a little bit of Cobalt Blue, and then I also used a little bit of Mauve with um, Dark Purple. For the pot I used Cerulean and, and a Blue Green Aqua. The rust is made by a variety of colors and I'll tell you what I use when I get to those. And the nest was done with Burnt Umber and Indigo Blue. And I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, please contact me. And okay, I'm going to start with the lilacs. And the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of underpainting for the main bulby part of the lilac. And this is just to tone the paper a little bit so I don't have those bright white sticking out. So these are going to be a variety of colors. So I'm going to have some pinks and some light purples and maybe some dark purples. So I'm just going to start with kind of getting in some pink, some dry paper. I could also wet it um, and get the same result. I am going to avoid where the leaves are because I don't want those obviously pink or purple, but I'll put some more pink up here just to get some color on the paper. And we'll continue through here. Maybe I'll get a little bit of the purple. And this is an ultramarine violet. The pink was rose matter. Um, use whatever colors you like. Um, I usually start with lighter colors and go to deeper colors. So here, um, like I said, under painting, we're going to use a lighter color. You can leave some white if you want some really light lilac colors. So here, maybe I'll leave this one a really light purple color. And then move along over to here, some more pink. And the paints, I've pre-wet those and my brush is wet. Just get some little bit of color in here. So at this point, you should just have all of your light colors showing through onto the lilac heads. Okay. Now we're going to have to let this dry for a few minutes. All right, now my underpainting is dry, and there's a multitude of ways to do lilacs, and I'm just going to show you a simple way of using a sea sponge. And you probably have these at home. Um, if not, you can pick them up at the Dollar Tree or at a craft store. Um, if you are working on this now and you don't have anything at home, you can use one of your new kitchen sponges. Just cut it and you can even add some bigger holes into your kitchen sponge. It'll work the same way. So the sponge has to be wet and squeezed out as much as possible because you don't want a really wet sponge because what will happen is you'll just get a big blob. You won't actually get those indentations of the um, texture of the sponge. So once you've got it just damp, which, you know, you, you don't see anything dripping off of it, you can just dab it into some of your paint. And I'm going to start with some rose matter. Um, I'm going to dab it off onto my palette, which I'm not sure if you can see or not, but I can see that I'm getting the texture. And I have also am taking the consideration that I want my light source coming from this upper, upper corner coming across because this area down here later I'm going to reserve for some really nice shadows that are going to be cast from the lilacs. So as I'm applying this, I'm thinking lighter paints on top and darker paints on the bottom. So the underpainting is very light, and now my rose matter, I'm going to come in and just kind of dab along and get some texture. 
and kind of get some shapes of, you know, what a lilac looks like. And that's my first layer. So now I'm going to take a little bit of a um, magenta, which is a nice, a little bit of a darker pink. And I'm going to come in and just get a, hit that under the bottom part a little bit more to show some of the shadow. So that is starting to give me the nice shape of the lilac. So I'm going to set that aside and now I'm going to use a angled, flat angled brush. And while that is still a little bit damp, get some green or light brown. You can mix some sap green, maybe a little bit of um, burnt sienna or quin gold. Mix those two together and you get a nice um, kind of a green gold color. And just kind of get in there and get a little bit of that stem that you would see on the inside of the lilac. And while it's still wet, it should merge in pretty nicely. And you can get the little stem coming out the bottom. And also, while that's kind of wet, oh, probably could get a couple of, just not out the center there. We might want to get a couple coming across, showing through here a little bit. So that's your first one. And I will also do a purple one for you. And that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to clean off that sponge in my clean, pretty clean water. And again, squeeze it out as much as you can. And I'm going to use a very light purple. I think this is like an ultramarine violet. Dab it into my paint. Kind of dab it onto my palette to make sure I'm getting the dabbing. And same with this. I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter near the top because that's going to be my light source. And just kind of bring that down along here. Now you could, the next color could be you could go with a really dark purple, or you could go almost with a cobalt blue or a cerulean blue. Um, I think I might try a little bit of cobalt for this one. And you'll see how those two colors, they mix really nicely together. So this would be the shadowy part on the bottom here. Oh, that's maybe a little bit too bright. Let me just get rid of some of that. But it's okay. It'll dry nice. So that's that. And then again, take that little bit of your flat brush Get that mixture that's on your palette of that green gold color and kind of get this in here for the stem and a little bit of the side stems. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just leave that with there, but I'm also the next step. I'm going to do a few of the leaves. Um, while this is still wet, if you can get some of the leaves and some of the greens from the leaves will mingle in too. I do like to mix my green, so I'm going to take some light yellow um, with a little bit of Prussian blue. Kind of get those on my, I've got a nice round brush now, soft round brush. It looks like this. It's pretty loaded with paint. And I'm just going to kind of get in here, I'll do this one at the top, and kind of let those colors kind of do their thing on the paper. I'll get this one, kind of swoop, swoop. And then if I do want, let me get that in there a little bit. This one's up next to another lilac, so I don't want to go overdo it. That's a little bit bright for me, so I, I'm going to tone it down by just adding a little bit more of the blue just to give it a little bit more interest. I've got different colors going on here. So I'll get a little bit of that, rinse off my brush and put a little bit more of the light yellow at the top because again my light source is coming from the top. Just flick some of that in there and look at how nice that that's coming through there. Those two, all those different colors mending, blending together. And this one here looks a little bit empty, like I could use a little bit more color. So I'm just gonna get in there with the sponge a little bit more and go over that. Maybe just kind of get in there a little bit more to fill in that space in the center that looked a little bit empty. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here. Okay, we're back and I just wanna show you kind of where I'm at. Um, so if you have to make any adjustments to your flowers, you can do that. You can pause this, but I'm going to move on. I am going to work on the tin container now, 
and I do like to do a little swatch before I get started just to make sure the colors are going to look okay. I'm choosing this blue-green color because it's going to be close to the robin eggs and I think it'll offset nice to this. And then I also wanted to work in the colors for the rust. So this is kind of an aqua blue here mixed with a little bit of cerulean and then when I get to the rust I'll, I'll tell you what colors I'm using for that too. So in this section I am going to do a little wet into wet and again my light source is coming across so I want to keep this side of the pail lighter than this side. So I'm going to wet this trying to avoid what I've already painted and avoid the robin's nest. Just get this a little bit wet. I'm going to avoid the handle at this point too because I want to do that later on its own. And then I'm just going to get a little bit, like I said, a little bit of cerulean for this side because it's a little bit of the lighter color. Kind of get that in there. Move that all around. Get as close as I can to what I've already painted. And since it's light blue, I could even, you know, you can't even get up in there. It's a lighter color than those purple ones that I have there. So I can go there and the same with the leaves. If I go over it with light blue, it's lighter than the green that I've already got. So it, it's okay. Then I'm gonna pick up some of that blue green color and kind of interject this in a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, this is an, we're gonna, it wasn't really old, but I'm making it hopefully to look old by the time we're done. So a little bit of this blue in. And tone it down just a little. I'm just gonna just plop in some blue, you know, give it some texture, oldness and get it all the way to the side over there. And even to darken up the side, I think I can go a little bit darker. I'm gonna take in a little bit of Prussian and just get along this edge, this area here. And I actually could work this all underneath. I think I will do that as kind of like the shadow where the leaves are on this side. So that'll give me my shadow colors under there and I have a little bit a little bit too close to that lilac so I'm just going to dab that out a little bit. Dabbing's okay. And now you can see I've kind of got you it does look like I've got the light source coming across. Now I'm going to switch over to my angled brush again, my flat angled, and this is where I'm going to start getting some colors of rust in. And I'm going to start with Quin Gold and I'm just going to kind of put this in here wherever I think I'm sure it would be kind of rusty along the bottom. So we're going to get along that edge and get some Quin Gold in there. Probably this edge would be maybe around where the handle is. There'd be some rust, maybe even in through here. So I'm going to start with the Quin. Then I'm going to add some purple because yellow and purple make a nice brown color. So you can get some Move my head back because I'm sure that's in the video at this point. Get some brown, rusty color going in. So I'm just kind of overlaying some of this gold with the, and I went outside my line, so I have to make my bucket a little bit bigger. That's okay. So to get that nice rust color, we've got that in, and then I'm going to add in a little bit of indigo, indigo blue. It's going to really darken it up. And then finally, I want to brighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to get some alizarin crimson, so some red. And then this should just dab it here and there. Nice rust color. Let the paper do its thing. Paint on the paper, mixing the colors together. And then probably I'm going to go a little bit more Quinn, Quinn Gold on top. 
And if it looks like it's getting a little bit too fuzzy in the center section, I'll just drag some of this down here too. Drag some out. That got a little heavy on this side. So again, I think I might just dab a little bit of that out. Dab it up a little bit. And actually, now that that's in here, I think what I'll do is get a little bit more of this blue and green. Kind of get that in there, darken that up. It kind of got a little bit too light for me. And I think that's good for now. So you, you go ahead and try that, and then we will move on to the next step. I'll get that handle done, and you'll see when this dries how nice it looks. Okay, so here again is where I was when I ended the last time. It's not completely dry, but I think I can go ahead and move into the little birds eggs and nest and again I'm I use the color on the pot because I thought it would complement the little robin's eggs. I'm going to do these very lightly wet into wet so I'm just going to wet each little bird's egg here kind of keeping a little bit of a dry spot between them because I don't want the paint to run from one into the other and here I'm going to take that little green mixture that I have with a little bit of cerulean again just to get that nice robin egg color and just put a little bit of paint at the bottom of the egg. Again, we've got the light coming across, so if it's lighter at the top, that's okay. So I'm gonna get that here. And again, clean the brush, dry it off, and then just kind of move a little bit of the paint up near the top of that. I'm just going to let those do their thing. And then I'm going to move back over to my flat brush and kind of work along the nest. And here I'm going to take some burnt umber, which is a darker brown, mix it with a little bit of indigo. So I get a nice dark nice dark color and here I'm just going to hopefully not get paint all over my sweater and just kind of swoop in some of the little wood stuff that's making up this nest branches and whatever Actually, this nice color, it sets off that blue really nicely. So I'll get that here. That's along the top. And then along the bottom here, I'll just kind of not worry so much about the texture. Just keep going along that edge of the nest. And then inside the nest, I'll lighten that up a little bit. We'll add a little bit more brown to my mixture on my palette and just fill in. around those eggs. With a little bit of that lighter brown. And as that's drying, we can um, hopefully go back to the handle Yeah, I don't want to overwork this, so I think I might even leave this. I could probably go in here and get some lighter browns up and through this area too, but let's get a little bit of that, get a little bit of the darker texture up the inside of this nest, get a little bit of texture under that egg, under that egg, and then what I want to do is just get some speckles on those eggs, maybe a little bit of that brown color. And what I'm going to do is just make sure my I'm back to a round brush. I'm going to get some of that brown, make it a really wet mixture, and then just come in and try to speckle those eggs a little bit by tapping the brush. 
And again, don't want to overdo it, so I think that's good. Now back to the handle, I'm just going to try to do that in one, one fell swoop. A little bit of that blue and the cerulean. Get in here, go down. It's a little bit brighter, but that's okay. It'll offset the color that is in the handle or in the actual tin of the bucket. Swoop that around a little bit. And I left a little bit of that edge because I am going to get some more rust in there too. It's a little bit of twin gold and purple right on my brush, right on the edge where it would be coming around. It probably would be rusty. It's an old bucket. Some more gold and purple. Maybe along that edge also. And then the, the screw, I'm almost certain that would be. It would definitely be rusted. Underneath that, and then the top edge of that handle too. So it's starting to come together. I'm kind of liking the way this looks. I hope you are too. And I think we'll stop here, and then we'll let this dry, and we'll come back and do the shadows, and we'll be done. Okay, so the next thing is to get the tabletop done and the shadows. And I'm going to keep it very light, so I will just put a little bit of a gray um, line over here to show that we're on a white table. And the way I mix my grays is a lot of times I just take the stuff that's on my palette and mix it together. And I know that a, a purple and a green makes a nice, green, a nice gray. I'm going to take some of that purple that I left, have left for my lilacs and a little bit of the green from the leaves and kind of mix those together and see if I can get a nice gray going here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just go across this line here, get that gray in, and just kind of let it move its way down the paper right there. And then as I come across, I'm going to wet this whole piece underneath here. Because I'm going to have my, I'm going to remember my light source is coming across. So I'm going to have these nice cast shadows coming across here. So I'm going to wet the whole bottom. And I like to make my shadows lively. So I don't use gray or black. I just use the colors that I use throughout the um, painting. So I'm thinking some of these pinks and some of these greens are coming down across here. So I'm going to start with the pink. And saying that right on the table I've got this pink flower. And then there's going to be some of the green that was next to it. Let those kind of come together. All those green leaves are kind of reflecting down there. Um, then we've got this nice pot, so I'm going to put some of that bluish color right across here and let that kind of disseminate. And then the last thing is a little bit of that brownish gray. And yes, I said I don't use that color gray, but we're going to just because that bird's nest is there. And I think I'm going to let it go like that. Oops, I don't want that gray to come, the brown, so I'm going to dab that brown out. Um, I could probably throw a little bit of this purple down there too because, let's see if we can get a little bit more purple, just to make it a little bit more cohesive. We have all those colors up here. I guess I can, I can probably get a little bit of purple down there from some of those flowers too. All right, then what I'm going to do, I think I'll just flip this paper around. Oh, i got to get a little bit of gray over here, too, on this side. So let's just get a little bit of gray going across there. And then I'm going to flip this around. 
and we do have to have something up here to tone it so I'm just going to get a mixture of a really light blue get my big thirsty fat brush and I don't have to put it everywhere but I think if I put a little bit of blue in here it'll just tone that paper down a little bit and you'll see same it's so light I mean I can go right across those lilacs nobody's gonna know kind of come in through here just get a nice tone so it's not that bright white paper staring you in the face think this is it let me lift this up for you to take a look at